All right, welcome to the Team Butterfly Effect All Hands Call. It is November 20th. Ha, huh, guys, like I know there's a high possibility that people are at, you know, as far as attendance on this call, whether people are going to be on or not, because kids in the U.S. had just got on Thanksgiving break and fall break. And I know there are a lot of moms and, and dads out there who maybe had kids having programs and specials or half days and things like that. But we are down to the countdown, literally until Christmas. Um, I know many of us have been feeling just that that slowness of fourth quarter and this is the time when we just stay committed and keep planting those seeds because you'll be so happy in January that you stayed consistent and you stayed present. So I'm so happy that you're here and I'm so happy that you're present with us today. I love ending my week with you. Um, just to cover a tiny bit of news, we're into our last week and a half of the team cup so remember it's not about how you finish something I mean it's not about how you start something it's how you finish um, and, a, and an extra shout out for Jill up to Jill Leptoski thank you so much for giving us our daily daily prompts um, that's been so helpful just making it more fun as far as the inviting process is concerned um, so I really really appreciate that also, Hammer and Chisel is about to be released, so you need to start talking about it now. If you're not, you're going to be missing the boat. We want as many of Team B to be ready um, to do the program. I know, and I know Jacob and I are going to be doing it. We hope you choose to do it with us, too. So that said, I don't want to spend too much time doing news. I am going to say hi, Ainsley. I know she was wanting to say hi. Hi, Ainsley. Um, I am so excited. Uh, to announce our guest speaker today. I mean, I've known Amanda now for eight years, more than um, a little bit more than eight years, and it it's always feels really interesting introducing her because it's like she's one of my mentors now, but it, our roles have definitely gone through reversals in times. And so it's been so cool. I met Amanda um, before she was a beach body coach, before she um, was in the marriage that she's in now. I met a Amanda at her beginning. And she, I don't want to spoil the story because she's going to tell her story to you today. But I have watched this woman transform and I am so happy to not only be able to call her my best friend but also to be able to call her my coach but let me tell you a couple of the things that, that she's accomplished since she has become a coach um, and I know I'm not going to get all the stats right because I forgot to message her and ask her for all the exact details but I believe she is a seven star a seven star um, coach. She has been a one-time premier coach and either a two or three-time elite coach, two-time elite coach. And um, she's a part of the market council. She's not only an instructor, but she's also a master trainer for Beachbody. So she teaches people how to teach Pio and size and, and, um, and, and turbo kick. She, she does it all. So with no further ado, I want to introduce Amanda Dewey to the call. Take it away, Amanda. Oh, thank you. Um, it's always uncomfortable getting introduced um, as anybody who's ever achieved anything in life, and I mean anything, whether it's um, you know getting a job or getting a college degree, it's not as glorious as what it really sounds, <laughs> right? Um, usually these accomplishments are really messy and wrought with failure, and Honestly, that's a lot of what my story is. It's a lot of various failures over the last um, six years. I've been a coach, six years this month, actually. So as Aubrey said, when she and I met eight years ago, I was married um, to someone else, and the boys were really little. I think Ro Roman was a baby because Nigel was about six weeks old when we met. So um, you know, our kids were babies, and I think I was probably a Mary Kay rep at the time. And I uh, really was just in a pretty dark place when Aubrey and I met. And 
had just started looking into personal development and had just started kind of exercising a little bit on my own. And um, luckily, you know, the universe brought Aubrey and I together and those two things kind of collided. Um, you know, we started to study personal development together. We went through um, Eckhart Tolle's A New Earth with Oprah, and we just kind of shared that. I think it was a 12 or 14 week experience together. And, you know, Aubrey started dragging me to group fitness and really just kind of opened some doors that really wouldn't have opened had she and I not met. So it is interesting how, how things I guess, can change over the years. So, I don't know, I guess probably only a year or so after Aubrey and I met, um, I filed for divorce, and within a week, he was gone, and I was had no job, <laughs> had no idea how I was going to continue living in the house that I was living in. Um, I was a group fitness instructor at that point, but pretty new in the industry, and anybody who's a fitness instructor knows that your body can only physically teach so many classes a week and they rarely pay the bills. Um, by the time you're done paying for your wardrobe, your shoes and any music and choreography that you need, you're lucky to break even and have a little bit of extra. So there was kind of a tumultuous, I guess, year or so <laughs> when everything was just kind of kind of falling apart and falling into place all at the same time. Um, I ended up filing for bankruptcy, took on a lot of, lot of debt that wasn't really mine, but you know, in the state of Texas when you're married, it was. Um, so I took on a lot of debt and ended up just filing for bankruptcy. Um, I decided the best option with the house was to let it go. And so my house was foreclosed on and um, I was still just working as a fitness instructor because I really didn't want to leave the boys at daycare. And quite honestly, I had been offered a couple of jobs, even was offered a job by the um, lawyer who um, handled my divorce. And when I did the math, I was going to be bringing home $100 a week after paying for daycare. And as someone with, you know, a, a full degree and some of my masters, I was like, I, I just, this just doesn't add up to me. And it was right about then that I met my coach, um, Melissa McAllister, and she, you know, had invited me to a couple of, of meetings face to face. And I remember the first time I met with her, totally believing everything she said. I didn't question the fact that she was, um, genuine in her intentions that she was she believed she was working with a company that she could could trust and represent and I didn't doubt her when she said this is a logical pairing for you you're a fitness instructor your people need something um, as far as nutrition and supplements and rather than sending them to GNC down the street why not send them to your store and so I, I didn't doubt for a second coaching. It made sense to me. And um, I wasn't afraid of network marketing because I had had experience with Mary Kay. And while it wasn't the right company for me, I didn't necessarily have a bad taste in my mouth. Go find Austin, okay? Go find him. He'll give you a cookie. Austin, yeah, Austin will give you a cookie. Sorry, four o'clock at my house is a little tricky with kids. Um, so I didn't doubt it, but I knew the financial situation I was in. We did not have challenge packs six years ago when I signed up. And so I sheepishly had to ask Melissa, um, can I use your computer? I need to look at my bank account. And I knew that I needed $140 because Shakeology was 97 and the sign up fee was 40. So I was going to be $130 plus tax and shipping. And I looked at my bank account and I had a little less than $100 in my bank account. And I remember just blushing and being crushed, but at the same time, not accepting that. And I just looked at her and I said, I can't, I can't do it today. I don't have the money, but can we meet again in two weeks? I'd love to sign up. And um, I just, I made some sacrifices. I think we probably had a garage sale. I got some cash from that went really cheap with groceries and fed my kids tuna and hot dogs for a few weeks. And lo and behold, two weeks later, I ended up signing as a coach. There was no coach training academy. 
there was nothing. Um, <laughs> we're just this week doing like a getting started right series in a diamond group that I have. And it's so funny. We have all these documents, we have forms and we have group Facebook groups. None of that existed back then. Facebook wasn't huge yet. Um, the company itself and, and networking was still new. So I didn't get a lot of help. I just knew that the first step was, was getting two coaches underneath me and starting to talk about Shakeology. So I spent about the first, um, till July, so about seven, eight, nine, maybe the first nine months or so, just flopping around as an emerald, okay? You know, kind of made, I don't know, I may have been close to Diamond, but I didn't know even what Diamond was. Um, Success Club was new, I think, that January, but I wasn't plugged into a community or any sort of training or anything like that. So while I was an emerald, I wasn't necessarily hitting Success Club um, because I didn't know what it was yet. I attended an event that summer where I learned what success club was. I learned what um, being a diamond was <laughs> and I learned that there were actually steps that you could take. And it was back then it was called the game plan. It was 10 steps instead of three. And that if we just followed these 10 steps, we'd have success in the business. And I remember the whole time, you know, working as a, um, as a fitness instructor and trying the speech buddy thing, just being really happy with a 30 or $40 check anytime it came in and that, to me, that was enough to know it was legit. And I didn't have to have inventory, which was really different than my experience with Mary Kay. So I wasn't necessarily investing a lot of money for the return that I was getting. After I attended the event and learned what Diamond was, I hit Diamond in 30 days. I was probably fairly close to it, but once I knew what the target was, I got it done. And it was only a month later that I hit one star diamond. I was lucky enough to have a working, had found a working coach at that point. By the end of my first year as a coach, I think I made right around $12,000, which is funny because there's that post floating around right now. If you just had to work out and share your story and you got paid to do it and you made, what was it, $12,000, would you do it? And it's funny because that's really and truly my story. That's, that's about what I made the first year. And again, it was just enough for me to know that this was legitimate and that there was possibility. I remember at that one year point sitting um, with Bill, who is my husband now, uh, we had been dating for about a year at this point, um, and saying, you know, there's just, there's got to be a way for me to make money and make this, you know, stay home with the kids and do something. Like, I know I, I'm an entrepreneur. I know I have that in me. I just don't know what it is. And I had no idea that I was talking about coaching. I just, I, I just didn't know the possibility with it. But fast forward, I really just started to tune in more and pay attention to the people around me, to the advice of my mentors, and really kind of just focused on what, what's the next goal? What's the next goal? Whether it was taking Success Club one month at a time, or, you know, if... I guess, I think maybe that second year, I focused a lot on getting new emeralds because we know that emeralds stay in the business longer. Um, and really, that, that's just kind of where I focused that second year. And by the end of that second year, I made um, right around $30,000. And I remember that being huge for me because when um, my ex-husband and I divorced, that's what we were living off of as a family of five, which is terrible, I know, but that's, that's how we were surviving before. And I had done this kind of, you know, with it maybe an hour, maybe two a week from home with two little kids still at home and really and truly still not grasping what this business was. I, I really and truly can look back and say, I didn't get it yet. But again, seeing that yearly income was like, okay, wow, I, I, you know, I doubled from last year and I, I made like a, a legitimate salary, right? A lot of adults make $30,000 a year and that's, you know, great. And so that I think was the year when it really started to click for me. So let's see. Um, yeah. So that year, um, that following year, I decided to push for elite. It became my focus of the year. So I knew I had to go um, get to Five Star Diamond. I knew I had to help new coaches hit Success Club, and that really became the focus that year. That year we grew a lot. I hit um, six figures for the first time. So huge jump in pay that particular year. Actually, again, having a big goal to push for. 
And in 2012, for the first time, rock star presenters became an elite team. Very, it was, it was a great accomplishment. Um, you can see my star from that year <laughs> actually hanging behind me. It was, it was a really, really cool experience. But um, I hadn't grown into the right kind of leader yet. And so while we pushed and made that goal happen, um, everything kind of fell apart after that. Uh, the five people that went diamond that year started to disappear. Um, they didn't see the value in the business the same way I did. Um, it, it just, I have all kinds of reflections on that, but I, I can now look back and say, I wasn't leading the team in, um, with a, <laughs> sorry, um, I wasn't leading the team with, with a servant heart. I wasn't, I wasn't serving and taking care of them. Um, it wasn't a, a team goal. It was a self goal, I guess is how I would say. And the following year kind of, kind of paid the price. Um, I'd had Ainsley in 2012. So yes, the, the year that my team hit elite was the same year I had a baby. Um, and 2013 just became a really trying year. We sold a house um, very shortly after we sold our house and moved. Uh, my dad was diagnosed with lung cancer. And I really spent the next five months doing a lot of traveling back and forth, spending as much time as I could with him while he was healthy, and then as much time as I could with him while he was sick and helping my sister. And in November of that year, um, he had passed away from lung cancer. I, we moved two more times that year. We were building a house. Um, and, you know, I had at that point, like a one-year-old, which is a lot harder than a newborn. If, I don't know how many moms out there would agree, but I think little babies are so easy. Just nurse them and they're fine, right? Just hold them and they're good. Then you get a one-year-old and they're into everything. Um, so it was, it was honestly, it was a tough year, mentally, emotionally, physically. Um, physically, I was starting to get sick. I didn't know what it was, found out a lot later, but it had some surgeries. It was just a, a tough year. And at the end of the year, we did, um, everything was in place. Uh, elite points was, were good, five star was good. Um, January 1st came and went, got the, you're an elite coach email. And about two days later, got a phone call from corporate and there was a bonus buying situation in my downline, meaning um, someone bought to make someone active, which is against the rules. And the upline star diamond is the one who pays the price. And since it was in one of my diamonds teams, uh, they took elite away and we weren't elite that year. So just about six weeks after really I had the worst blow of my life, which was losing my dad. I had to turn around and tell my team, I know we did everything we could to hit elite, but it's not happening. And that was the year that I hit premiere. Um, and again, you know, I kind of looked at it like I could take this as a really big failure and I did for probably about a month <laughs> and then kind of just had to say, okay, do I still, do I still believe in this company? Do I still believe in all these hundreds of people that took this ride and journey with me? And, um, I did. And so I put on my big girl panties and said, okay, let's do it again. And we spent all of 2013. Um, pushing for a lead again. And this time I did the work as far as um, more personal development, changing my leadership style, looking back over the past, I guess it had been four years at that point of all the failures <clears throat> that I had had and the failed relationships um, with coaches and different things like that. And, and really just try to figure out how I could do better. And I really did. I would say the switch there was to more of a of servant leadership and, and helping others. And in doing so, um, we were able to reach elite for 20, God, what year is this? 2012, 2013, 2014. So in 2014, we became elite again. Um, but, you know, I guess, oh, and I, I stopped talking about income at one point. I guess that's just because once, you, once I hit six figures, anything more than that would just became crazy <laughs> to me. Um, and so now, um, and I talk about money only because I think it's a, an important discussion to have. It's not everything, but it does provide a lot of freedom for us to care for family members, for us to um, 
donate to a lot of charities that are really close to our heart and to do things with our family that we just wouldn't have the option to do if we didn't um, have the money. So at this point in time, it's about 6,000 a week, give or take. And you know, that's just where we're at at six years into the business. We're on track to be a lead again this year. It is never over until it's over. That is one thing that I have learned about being premier or elite or achieving anything, even something as simple as success club. It is not over till it's over. So we shall see, <laughs> but um, we're on track to be elite again this year. And in preparing for today's call, one of the most important things I wanted to share with you guys was my business changed when I changed. And I really mean from the inside out, because when I started, um, you know, as Aubrey kind of referenced before, you know, she had opened the door to, I, I mean, I was really just beginning to toy with personal development. It was something I had kind of toyed with my whole life, and I was toying with it when I met Aubrey. And she kind of opened that door and, um, you know, invited me to start practicing yoga. But the second that, um, that my husband said, or, you know, my ex-husband had said, I can't do this anymore. And then two days later I filed divorce. Um, I had to, I, I was kind of in that forced position, you know, between a rock and a hard place and being someone who was educated and came from a good family and really never saw herself in the place that I was. My choice was, wow, am I going to go on welfare and wick or am I going to fix myself and figure out what the hell I can do. And when faced with those two options, I didn't like the first one. And so I really was forced into light year speed of personal development. Um, I had to move at a faster pace with developing me. I had to look at yoga as something that I practiced off the mat and not just something that was an asana. It was it was immediate to me that the only way I was going to survive taking care of two little kids by myself with virtually no income was to, to somehow not go insane, quite honestly. Um, and then to start an, a business from the ground up through all of that process. Um, I know a lot of you are listening to the energy bus right now. And a couple of things that just really rang true to me, because um, if, you, if you haven't read it, <clears throat> You know, it's about this guy who just feels like a victim in life. Like everything's happening to him and he doesn't have choices. And obviously, I had a lot of things going wrong, but I had to own up how I got there. And I know um, one of the quotes today that I was listening to actually that just really stood out to me. And it was, never turn your back on something that has the opportunity to change your life. Whether that's a friendship, a business, a chance. And, and that was kind of said in the context of um, we all have life going on. You know, I had over the, um, especially probably the first three years when I was building my business by, by myself more with, you know, without, without any spousal support or, you know, just all that kind of stuff where, where things were really bad, quite honestly, you know, whether it was my dad being sick or, you know, me just going through a lot of financial distress, people would always, you know, say like, oh, you, you seem like you're handling it so well and you're so positive. That was always something I heard. You're so positive. And they would say, you know, how are you doing? And people wouldn't guess that you have things going on in your life. And it's the reality is, is that everybody does. The only difference is how we handle it. And that is really and truly a choice. Um, I have a hard time as a coach when people have personal problems, accepting that they say, well, I can't hit success club this month or I can't hit diamond this month because X, Y, Z is going on in my life. And I, I, I have a really hard time sympathizing with that because the other point that I really wanted to get across today was every successful coach out there, it's not, they're not, lives have not been perfect while they were building their business. It's that they chose to build their business anyways, knowing that they were not going to turn their back on something that had the opportunity to change their life. You don't wait on that, no matter what is happening in life. I still signed coaches and hit success club in the month that my dad passed away. And Aubrey knows we were very, very close. That is not to say that I didn't lie, that I loved him any less or that that was any less traumatic. It was incredibly traumatic, 
but I may, I, I like, I don't know. I don't know how to like get it across to people that like, it's a choice. Work your business for 20 minutes a freaking day. Just show up. If you show up through all the ups and downs that your life is going to throw to you, because I can guarantee you, I still have a living parent. At some point, somewhat, you know, I'll lose another parent probably, right? We're all going to have, and Eric, I know, you know, that's a, a personal thing for you right now. And, and we're not the only ones, you know, to, to feel like we are alone in going through the dark times in life. I'm not the only person that's filed bankruptcy. I'm definitely not the only person that's gotten divorced with young kids. I'm not the only person who's faced unemployment. And I'm not the only person who's built a successful beach body business. You know, it's, we're not alone in this. And so, you know, the only thing I can say that I've done well in my journey as a coach is constant, consistent personal development, becoming better, a better me has created a better team and always, always showing up regardless of whatever's going on in life. Um, and knowing that that done is better than perfect. You know, I could have easily said to Aubrey today, you know what, four o'clock just doesn't work in my family life. Um, it's just not going to happen. But you know what, I think that showing up to today's call, even with um, distractions, <laughs> hello, distraction number one, um, is better than me having turned it down. <coughs> and it's simple little things like that, that will change your business. Trust me, um, I feel physical, uh, physical resistance. I won't say pain because it's not pain, but I, it, it takes the most discipline, the most discipline it takes me to do anything is to sit down and do invites. I hate it. I hate it with a passion. When I say it takes physical discipline, it's because like I literally can feel from my shoulders down, they don't want, my fingers don't want to touch the keyboard. I don't want to do it. I can think of nine million other things I would rather do. But I take a deep breath. When I do it, I literally just, I take a deep breath and I go, this is a part of the process. We cannot avoid the struggle. The struggle is what is going to get us to the next level. I can't complain about not having new coaches or enough new coaches or say that I suck at recruiting if I don't do the freaking work to do it. So I force myself, even though it's like physical resistance. Um, I, and I, honestly, I had one last thing, and then I'll, I'll let you guys... Um, I'll stop. But um, I made a post today. You know, people want to think that like, but surely, you know, so-and-so has a secret. You know, I've had the opportunity to work with a lot of different top coaches throughout the years. And top, top, you know, my, my upline is, um, you know, is a Beachbody millionaire, makes more than a million a year, has been top 10 four times. I think this will be her fifth. She's been elite seven times. I mean, just crazy, crazy successful. I know for a fact what she does every day and she doesn't do anything that we don't know. She just does it better. She does it with more discipline. She does it with, um, you know, possibly more hours. I don't think she works as many hours now because she's systemized it and found, you know, great assistance to help her out. But I know there's no secret. And I, you know, I shared that today on my personal page. There's no secret to success. It's in your daily habits, showing up for the business, spending time on making yourself a better person and doing it every damn day. You can't do it once in a while. You guys know this is health and fitness people. We know it with our health and fitness. Why can't we figure that out with that it has works the same way with business? You know that saying what you eat in private, you wear in public, your business is the same way. The way you work in private is going to be the level of your success that is recognized in this business. And it's really, that's, it's really that simple. So that's all I wanted to share. I literally have about three to five minutes if you want to do a QA and a um, before I have to run Roman to gymnastics. That's up to you, Aubrey. But that's all I want to say. Does, does anybody have any questions for Amanda? Take yourself off mute. 
I'm an open book, so you can ask anything. Yeah, you can ask anything or wave your hand, reaching forward. Jill, you're leaning forward. Are you trying to take yourself off mute? Are you trying to take yourself off mute, Jill? Okay, I'll do it. Okay, what's your question, my love? I was going to ask um, about personal development. So I find that I do a lot of personal development, but sometimes for me, the challenge is how to really internalize it and focus and act on it. So my question for Amanda is what advice she has on just doing it. Cause you know, I, I feel like sometimes I'm trying to learn it through osmosis. Like I read it and I expect it to just happen, you know? So yeah. and obviously that's not the case. So. Well, yes and no. Can I, can I, I, yes and no. I would say um, a big part of it is we learn by, by, by doing and by teaching. So I, I think one, one way, of course, is, is applying concepts that resonate with you, right? Because at this point, and I know Aubrey kind of sometimes feels the same way, sometimes we read a lot of personal development that just reedifies everything we already know, okay? But it's a matter of uh, holding me accountable to it reminding me of it, having a new way to say it or think of it. Um, like the energy bus is really and truly, I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, I've never, I've heard all this before, but I like, you know, I, I, I can see how that helps others. And as you saw today, I was able to take that and use some of the concepts from that to teach you guys. And I think that as we, as we teach others and our team is a great way to teach, um, but he's also serving on our like page and our personal page. I mean, you can serve and teach there as well. So I would say um, I don't apply necessarily every freaking technique that I read because every person has different ones. I love Brenda Burchard and I use little techniques that he has and I've loved, you know, Deepak Chopra and just, you know, there's all these different leaders and teachers that I like and you just have to take those bits and pieces that work for you and use them for yourself. But then I also think just having a great memory and being able to like go back to like, who was it that taught me this? Cause I know this way didn't work for me, but I think it'll work for Trisha. You know, like, Hey, you know, Darren Hardy does it this way. That's different than what Jeff Olson says, but I think this, this route will work better. So I hope that kind of answers your question, Jill. Yeah. Thank you. To reiterate that, I'm, I will piggyback on what Amanda said exactly. Like I teach stuff in yoga all the time before I have it down because that's what internalizes it for me. You know, it's every time you teach something. So I would say when you find something really inspiring from your personal development that you're like, wow, I need to internalize that deeper. Um, go to Kristen, go to Eric. I know he's your success partner or, or do, do something on your page where you're attempting to teach it to somebody else. Yeah. Thank you, Amanda. Anybody else have any questions? I know she has to run. Amanda, thank you so much for your time. We highly appreciate it. I love, love, love you. And before we're completely gone, I just need to say shout out to Nicole. She's about to sign her first coach. She got her first yes. So and she's right here on the call. She's, she, it's, she's going to sign her first coach and going to order a second bag of Shakeology for her husband. So it's exciting in, in that house. So anyhow, thank you so much. You guys have a happy Thanksgiving. We will not have a call next week for um, Thanksgiving, but we will have our opportunity call on Tuesday, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. Please don't forget that. Be inviting people. I'll get you guys the link for that at latest Tuesday morning. Okay. Love you guys. Bye.